sisters in Christ. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank Him for this opportunity to fellowship with these people. Amen. 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 The title of my offering message today is, Are You Available? Amen. Amen. So God does not begin work in us by asking us about our talents and our abilities, but He checks our availability. And if we then prove that He can depend on us, He will then increase our capability and our capacity. Amen? Amen. So when things are going bad and there are storms in our lives, when we are in a season of storms, God checks on us how reliable we are. Amen? We ought to ask ourselves, are we reliable and are we dependable? Amen? Can God depend on you to carry His kingdom? Amen? Can He rely on you to bring your first fruits to His house? We ought to develop a character that says, I am here, Lord, use me. Here is my finances, Lord, use them. Amen? Even in our workplaces, if our employee feels that we are dependable and reliable, He increases our territory. Amen? Amen. The same with the Lord. If He feels that He can trust you with this little, He will increase your bonds. Amen? The Bible says, whoever can be trusted with very little can surely be trusted with much. Amen? Amen. The Lord is not interested in our money, for He already owns everything. Amen? Amen. But He is interested in our character. Can He rely on you? Are you available? Amen? Amen. When storms arise, do we pull back or do we hold steadfast? When the price of things are going up, do we say, I can cut back on my offerings to God? Or are we faithful with it, knowing that He also is dependable? Knowing that we can also depend on our Father to provide for us. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 3 verse 14 says, for if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as, we, as when we first believed, we will surely share in all the things that belong to Christ. Amen. So beloved, let us hold steadfast. Let us become a dependable people. Let us be faithful with our givings and let us make it available for His kingdom. Amen. 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 Let us just bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we bring our offerings to you. We bring what we have, O oh Father God. Father God, today make us dependable, O oh God. We want to be a reliable nation, O oh Father God. Father God, today we say we are here. Use us. Use our offerings, O oh Father God. They are available for you to use for your kingdom, O oh God, for the work to carry on in the kingdom of oh Father God. Father God, come in our hearts and stir our hearts. Let our desires be your desires, O oh Father God. Let our desires align with your kingdom's needs, O oh Father God. Father God, we thank you, O oh God, that you also, O oh God, are dependable. You are faithful, O oh Father God. You never cease to be faithful, O oh Father God. You are faithful from day one and you are still faithful, O oh Father God. We keep our eyes on you, O oh God, knowing that you will provide for us every single day of our lives, O oh Father God. Lord, we trust in you. Same, O oh Father God, make us a people that are trustworthy, O oh Father God. We thank you, O oh Father God. Lord, we just pray, O oh Lord, for our loved ones, O oh God, that we've lost, O oh Father God. That you may come, O oh God, and comfort us, O oh Father God. Father God, we trust, O oh Lord, that they are with you, O oh Father God. Lord God, we are at rest, we are at peace, for we know that they have made it, O oh Father God, to your, to your kingdom, O oh Father God. We thank you, O oh Father God, that we could share this opportunity, O oh Father God, to fellowship in your house, O oh Father God. Lord, you say where there's two or three gathered, O oh mighty God, you will surely be there, O oh God. Lord, we trust that you are here today with us, O oh Father God. We trust, O oh mighty God, that you are in our finances, O oh Father God. We trust, O oh Father God, that you will increase our bonds, 
oh God. Father God, everything we bring to you, oh God, we trust that they will be multiplied, oh Father God. Today we say we lack nothing, oh God. We lack nothing for our God will provide for us. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We just bless your holy name, oh Father God. We give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, oh Father God. Have your way today, oh Father God. Father God, stir our hearts, so mighty God, that it may be aligned with yours, oh Father God. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for your love, your mercy. Thank you, Lord God, for the truth of your word. Thank you, Lord God, for the angels of God, for ministering spirits sent, O oh Lord God, to minister unto us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, our seal, O oh Lord God, of redemption. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Thank you for your presence in our lives. For your presence in this place, oh God. Thank you that you touch us, oh Lord. Lord, oh God, you know everything there is to know about each and every one of us. We pray that you touch us this morning. Father, as our faces differ, Lord, so do our needs differ, Lord. I pray you'll meet every person at the point of need, oh God. Pray, Lord, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you have your way in our lives, Father. Not our will, O oh Lord, but your will be done, Father. Lord, we look to Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior, who considered not his own life, O oh God, but lived in absolute obedience and trust to you, O oh God. And has given us, Lord, an example to live. To live a life of obedience and a life of trust in you, O Lord. For, o Lord, in you do we trust, in you do we hope, O Lord. We thank you, Lord, O God, things around us may fail, this world may fail, the things of this world will fail, men will fail, Father, society will fail, governments will fail, so many things will fail, but your word will never fail, O God. We thank you, Lord, that we can trust in you, O Lord, and we can hold on to the promises of your word, Father God, for they are absolute and they are true, O God. We thank you this morning, O Lord, in the name of Jesus, that we are not a people without hope, O Lord, but we, have, we are a people that have a living hope, O Lord. Our hope is in you, our trust is in you, our faith is in you, our, our confidence is in you, O God. We thank you this morning, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, and even as, Lord, as I stand here this morning to share your word with your people, O oh Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Let the church of God be, Lord, edified. Let the church be encouraged, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let faith come to every person, Lord, that is under the influence of my voice this morning. I pray, Lord, that you'll anoint my vocal cords, anoint my mouth, O oh Lord, to declare your word to your people. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus Christ, your Son. For the blood has paid the price for us, O oh God. And we stand here this morning, Lord, being set free. For whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So we thank you this morning, Lord, for the glorious liberty that you've given us in Christ Jesus, your Son, our Lord and Savior. The Lord of oh God, this morning, we say unto Jesus and Jesus Christ alone, be all praise, all glory, all honor, all power, all dominion, all authority. All belongs to him. He is most worthy to receive all our praise and all our worship this morning. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, in your blessed name. We just thank you this morning. In your wonderful name we pray for the people of God. Say, amen, amen, amen. 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 Come on, you can do better than that. Amen. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of God. It's good to be in church. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. Greetings, everybody. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's so good to be in church. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. It's, you know, like the psalmist says, I was glad, I was glad, and they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Yes, so good to be in the house of God this morning. Amen. Thank God, amen. Praise God. Now, this morning, before I go on with the message, I would like us as a family to stand, and I'd like us to just pray. I'm going to name a few things that I need us to pray over and to pray for and to thank God for. And um, God has really been good. He's faithful. He's faithful. This morning I'd like us to please remember uh, Danielina and her family in prayer. Um, we all know that Brother Johnny, Papa Johnny has gone on to be with the Lord. And there is no doubt in my mind. I know with certainty he ran his race and he's received the glorious prize. There's somebody that I can honestly say that I, you know, would aspire to look to as an example of one who served the Lord diligently. It's Brother Johnny. Really, someone close to the heart of God. He's gone to be with the Lord and he went peacefully. No sickness, no nothing. God just called him one Sunday morning. And what, what, what moved my heart is when we got to the house after Tanirina had called us, we got to the house. He was there sitting in his seat. You can see he was spending time with the Lord. And man, what most moved me is that, you know, we know Tanirina had just lost on Johnny. And the first thing Tanirina looks at me and says, Pastor, is there church this morning? If we had church, Tanirina would have been in church having just lost the husband. You know, and I looked at their life and I remember I said to Pastor Sharon, remember how if either Tanirina or when Johnny was sick, if either one was sick, the one would still come to church and stand in the gap for the other. That's the life they live. And to hear, you know, it didn't strike me then what she was saying, but when I got home and I thought, my God, the faith that she had, Pastor, is the church today. I was reminded of the woman that had just lost a child and came to the man of God, and the man of God, you know, and servant of the man of God, asked, how are you? The man of God, asked, how are you? He says, it is well with my soul. Man, that, that is faith. That is faith. That is strong faith. So let us remember the family in our prayers. Let us too remember Brother Marlon and his son, Brother Nathan, as they also have lost somebody. They've lost Sister Beverly, who's gone to be with the Lord as well. It's run her race. Let us remember her. Let us remember those who are sick. Um, we think of Sister Diane. Many of you know she gave a testimony how God had healed her of cancer. And uh, she, the doctors have picked up cancer somewhere else in her body now. So we trust God that God will come through. Thank God who delivers her then and God will deliver her now. We're going to pray about that. And we remember Sister Rachel who too was not well, but praise God, she's well now. And Brother Nero, they all well, praise God. So we thank God for their healing. We thank God for those who, you know, God has come through for. And um, I thank God too for my healing. And I, you know, Pastor Sharon, you know when God speaks to you, you can speak through your spouse and through your children. And she gave me a word which was kind of like a rebuke. And I received that word. And I said, thank you, I received it, Lord, because it became a rainbow word to me. I was supposed to go and see the pulmonologist. 
endeavor that are scheduled to the seat of pulmonologists to do a bronchoscopy on my lungs. I said, enough is enough. The God who gave me these lungs, I declare that they are, they are normal. I declare that they are sound. I do not have to go. I've got the physician of physicians living on the inside of me. And that spirit that resides within me will quicken my mortal body. So I want to give God thanks this morning as I pray. Because I'm standing on the word of God for his healing. And I know he's healed me already. I'm not sick. I'm well. I am the healed of the Lord keeping sickness away. I declare that I'm healed. We thank God for Brother Felix for his healing. So, you know, in light of all this, there are many things that we can pray about, we can look at, you know, but also to give thanks to God. So I'd like us as a family to just stand up. And as we just remember all these people in our prayers, as we just pray, we just spend about two or three minutes in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we just thank you this morning for your sovereignty, your lordship, your kingship, your rulership over our lives. Thank you that you are God and that there is no other besides you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for the lives of those most dear to us. We think of Papa Johnny, we think of Sister Beth, Run their race and we've gone to be with you. Father, we thank you for their lives. Thank you for their memories and the legacy that they've left, oh Father, behind, Father. Father, even having left, Lord God, they, Lord God, have left family and friends and relatives, Lord. We pray for all of them. We pray for their spouses, for their children, their grandchildren, for all their families and friends, Father. We pray to comfort them, console them, give them strength to be this time. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord, where there may not be an understanding as to why things happen, Father, but the Spirit of God will give us understanding. Father, your word declares that the children of Isaka had understanding of the times. I pray, Lord God, and that understanding will come, oh Lord God, and answer questions, oh Lord God, that people have. And Lord, cause the hearts of Lord God to be at peace in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you console and comfort them now this time, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we think of those who are ill. We think of Sister Diane. We pray for a healing. We thank you, Lord, that you do not change, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for what you did in her life before. You do it again and again and again and again and again. For you are, Lord God, the unchanging God, Father. We thank you. You never change. You remain the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you now, Lord God, for the healing power of God. We think of all those who are sick, O oh Lord. We pray that your healing power be released, O oh Lord God, into their lives in the name of Jesus, that they be healed, that they be strengthened in the name of Jesus, Lord. Be healed, Lord, that they be healed in their minds, that they be healed in their bodies, Lord. Be healed in their spirits, O oh God. We pray this in the name of Jesus. And we thank you now that healing is the children's bread, my God. In Jesus' blessed name, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the testimonies of your goodness, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for healings. We thank you for breakthroughs, Father. We thank you, Lord, for salvation. We thank you, Lord God, for victories, Lord. We thank you that you've given us the triumph, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we have the victory in Christ Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, we raise a banner, a banner unto the Lord. We say the Lord of hosts, he is our God. Jesus is Lord, Lord. We thank you, Lord God. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord of our banner. And we thank you, Lord, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We give you all the praise, the glory, the honor, and the worship, oh God. Well, we worship you, Father. Thank you for your great love that you have, oh Lord God, towards us. Thank you for the thoughts that you think towards us. Thoughts of peace, oh Lord. Thoughts, oh Lord, of love, oh Father. We thank you in the name of Jesus, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray that you be with your people in this time, Father. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
your blessed name, oh God, we just thank you now. In Jesus' blessed name, Father, we praise you and we thank you, Lord. In your most magnificent name, we pray. Hallelujah. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. God's people say, Amen. Amen. Just say, I'm doing the word. I'm doing the word. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to share with you this morning from the book of James, the epistle of James, chapter number one. And I think it's very, very apt to the times that we are living in the season that we are in in our lives. You know, the Bible says the just shall live by faith. We must understand that we are people of faith. According to Romans chapter number 8, we have been justified those who be justified, those of the just. We live by faith. The world may not understand it. They may kind of have maybe like a concept of it, but they don't understand the dynamics of faith. They don't understand how this thing works. That's why you find even the media, when they speak about men and women of God who preach the gospel and feed God's people with the word of God, they refer to them as faith preachers. Yes, we preach faith. Because we are people of faith. The times that we are living in, especially now, we are living in a time where we have to live in absolute trust in the authority and sovereignty of the Word of God. We're living in a time where our faith is not something that we talk about, but it's something that we live out, that we act out, that we demonstrate. In fact, now we are called to live even more so, live out our faith. You see, faith resides within our heart. It resides within our heart, but unless we work it out, Nothing will happen. Nothing will change. We'll never see the change. We'll never get the results. Understand, people of God, when you read the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation, you find God hasn't changed even up to now. He still hasn't changed. He's the same God. The same God who split the Red Sea is the same God who's with you today. Come and talk to me, somebody. The same God who raised the dead is the same God who's with you today. The same God who multiplied the fish and the loaves is the same God that's with you today. It doesn't matter what your situation or your circumstances, God hasn't changed. His word hasn't changed. His promises haven't changed. It hasn't changed. We've been called to live by faith. Why don't we see the miracles? It's because nobody is activating their faith so the miracle can break forth and be released. There were many that were around Jesus listening to him preach. When he was walking, the crowds were thronging, thronging against him, but there's only one that was healed was a woman who pushed against the crowd and said, if only the faith was in her heart, 
She saw herself being healed and she said, if only I can just touch her, she'll be healed. And she, it activated the power. That's why you hear Jesus even said, somebody touched me. Because somebody stepped out in faith. Jesus was sitting in a house that was filled with people. There was no room, no way for people to come in. Four friends carrying their friend on a stretcher. They get to the door, there's no way in. There's no way through the windows. And they go and they rip apart the roof and they let him down and set him before Jesus and the man is healed. But yet there were many that were listening to the sermon that Jesus was preaching, but none of them were healed except this man. I began to, you know, as I was meditating on this and I was speaking to the Lord, the Lord said to me, he says, right now in this time, in this day and age, you've got to live out your faith if you want to experience the miraculous. Yeah. It's no use saying, I trust God. There are many, listen, there are many people that will tell you, I trust God. Yeah. I trust God for my healing. I trust God for my marriage. I trust God for my finances. I trust God for my job. But they're not acting. Let's go, let's, let's just read on James chapter number 1, verse number 22. He writes, now James here was not writing to the unsaved. He was writing to the saved. He was writing to the brethren, brothers and sisters. And he writes, and he says this, he says, but be doers of the word. I want you to highlight that. Be, you see, be doers. Mm, Jesus. You see, when God created the heavens and the earth, He spoke words. That's the authority of the word. When, when God created the light, it was just two words He said. Light be. Light be. And there was light. Yeah, you know, the translations say, God said, let there be light, you know, <laughs> that's to kind of get you the, you know, to break it down and you understand it. But if you look at the original, God just said, light be, he spoke, he said, light be. Light exists. And it just came. Now watch what James says here. He says, be doers of the word. In other words, he's saying, the word is there, be it. Hmm. The word is there, be it. Are you, are you, to, to change your situation, to change your circumstance, you need the word. It's not going to change without the word. Yeah. Listen, Jesus, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, Jesus gave an, an analogy, he gave it. He told the story of two men. Two men who faced exactly the same storms. One man built his house on the sand. The other man built his house upon the rock. You remember that? Watch Matthew chapter 7. I just want to read just one passage for you. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 7 verse 24, Jesus says, therefore, whoever, whoever, he doesn't say a specific person, he says whoever, in other words, it's an open qualification, everybody qualifies, whoever hears these sayings of mine, whoever hears my words and does them, I will liken him to a man who built his house on the rock. Whoever hears and does them. You can't just hear the word and leave it there and say, oh, I trust God, I believe the word. No, you've got to act it out. Because when you receive the word of God, listen, when you receive the word, and that word becomes rhema to you. Rhema is a spoken word. It's where God, listen, in the, in the Greek, there's three 
word used for word. Grafe is the written word. And there's a logos word. And then there's Rehma. Rehma is the spoken word of God. Now when Rehma comes, because it's God speaking to you, when Rehma comes, it doesn't matter who says what. They'll never be able to convince you otherwise. Because you know that God said it and he said it to you. When Rhema comes, the revelation comes. You see, when Jesus healed the sick and he spoke, he spoke. When he said, take up your bed and walk, the guy didn't wait to feel something. The guy understood the authority of the word. Even the centurion, he understood the authority of the word. Hence he said, I say to this servant, you know, I'm also a man of authority. I say to the servant, go and he goes. That one come and he comes. But only say the word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus gave the word. And at that very moment, his servant was healed. You see, when you receive the word, when Jesus said, rise up, take up your bed and walk, the guy didn't wait to feel something. The guy, that word was rhema to him. It was revealed to him that I can rise up. I can walk. I can I can go home. That's what Rema does. It, it, you know, it's a revelation now that something has happened. I'm broken out of something now. The shackles are broken now. I'm no longer in bondage now. I'm set free now. And he responded to the command of the word of God. He come on, listen, he, you see, when you respond to the word, you come under the authority of that word. But when you do not respond to the word, you are under the authority of another. That's why you're fine. I mean, we just saw it now. The wise man built his house on the rock. The winds came. The storms rose. But his house was stood. The foolish man, his house was washed out. That's why you're fine. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we've all received the same Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, when we received the gospel. There's only one gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's why Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. You see, we all have the same Bible. We all have the same Bible. But you find one is getting results, one is not getting results. The same Bible. You find that one is probably not reading the Bible at all. Yet, you understand, you've got to read the Word, you've got to spend time with the Word. Some people, the only time they open the Bible is on a Sunday in church. The rest of the time they'll sit at home and they'll watch sermons, listen to sermons. No time to open the Word for yourself. Let God speak to you. Yet we are fighting the same battle. We're facing the same battles. But one is getting breakthrough, one is not getting breakthrough. Why? Because the one spends time reading the word and does the word. The other is probably reading and hearing but not doing. They don't tell you that. I remember sitting in a sermon in a service one day. A man of God was praying. And he called up, there were two couples he called up. Two couples. Who couldn't conceive. They couldn't conceive. Prayed for them and gave him an instruction. He says, now go and do your homework. A year later, a year later, I happened to be in the same church. And a couple came to give a testimony. They had a baby. 
What happened to the other couple? The one couple that got the baby, they did the homework. Other people, when they think of homework, they think of something else. But this couple, went, they went and prepared a nursery for a baby. The other couple were waiting for something to happen first before they prepared the nursery. And guess what? They're still barren. You see, you can be too, you can receive the, exactly the same word, exactly the same instruction, but not everybody will do what they're supposed to do. Any friends say, how come that one is prospering financially and I'm in financial? Because you're not sowing. How come that one is healed and that one's not? Because you're not, you're not stepping out of your healing. You've got to, you've got to get off that sick bed. Jesus. Watch what, listen, he says here, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. So if you're only hearing and you're not doing, you are deceiving yourself, you're living in deception. Jesus. Watch it. Let's go to Luke's Gospel, chapter 10. It's in Luke's Gospel, chapter 10. Wonderful Jesus. You see something Jesus said in Luke 11, 28. He says, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Luke 11, 28. In Luke 10, from verse 18, watch what Jesus says. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority. I give you authority. Listen, he's saying, I'm giving you my authority. Listen. When he says, I saw Satan fall from heaven, by what authority did he fall? By whose authority? By whose authority did he fall? By the authority of Christ, the Son, the authority of God. He fell like lightning. So that authority that threw him out of heaven, Jesus is saying, I give you that authority. I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. I give you the authority to trample on the lies of Satan. He's the father of lies. He's, he's the deceiver of the brethren. What does James say? If you're hearing but not doing, you are in deception. So there's a deceiver that's deceiving you. You are under the authority of another. Yeah. You see? Because he lies to you. And he gets you into thinking that, you know, God doesn't want you healed. God doesn't want you, you know, to, to live a healthy life, a prosperous life. God doesn't want you to get married, he, you know, he wants you to stay alone. Why? Because he gets you to keep on looking back at your past and you shouldn't be looking back at your past. You should be looking to your future. Looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of my friend. But what happens? You're looking back. He gets you to looking back. You look back and you see. How? The relationships never work. So you come out of a broken relationship or a broken marriage or a broken home or a broken family. Or how you were retrenched and you lost your job and now there's no hope for you. So you keep looking back and everyone you listen to, you may even find that they are them brethren that fellowship with you in the church 
that say it's okay, everybody, there's, so many, there's, there's no jobs. But they don't tell you because they also are unemployed. But they don't tell you that, listen, I'm broke because I'm not exercising my faith. I'm not getting up in the morning to go and hand out CVs. I'm not praying to God and sowing the seed in faith and asking God for an idea so I can maybe just start a business and become an employer. Yeah. Now you may say, but yeah, but how can I start a business? Let me tell you. You, you know, you can be walking, walking in the field and you find that there's, there's trees that have fallen. How many of you have seen fallen trees all, all around town? You mean to tell me you can't go get a chopper, get an axe, get a saw and go start cutting up that tree so that you can get some wood and start selling that wood? You mean to tell me you can't find a bucket of water and soap in your house and go wash somebody's car and start a car wash? You mean to tell me, listen, wait, listen, when you read the word, the answers are in the word, the prophet even asked, what do you have in your house? She said, oh, my master, I only have oil. He says, go borrow vessels. Yeah. What do you have in your house? When you're cooking your next meal, maybe you can cook a little bit extra and you can find out from all the garages around town, you know, these guys that are filling at the petrol station, ask them, don't they want a hot meal? Don't tell me there's no opportunities. Opportunities, God has filled them. We're surrounded with them. But you keep listening to everybody that tells you there's no job, there's no money, there's no this, there's no that. Why? They don't exercise their faith. They don't take a step of faith. You speak to business people, they tell you, I took a risk. No, as people of God, we don't take risks. We take steps of faith. The Bible tells us, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, he will draw near to you. How do I draw near to God? By taking a step of faith. Taking a step of faith is, listen, it's responding to what God has said. Because when you respond to what God has said, you are honoring His word. And when you honor His word, you honor Him, and therefore He honors you. Yeah. But if you don't honor His word, you're dishonoring His word. So how can He come through for you? He says, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over watch over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Yeah. You see, if you're responding to his word, God, the Bible says, he watches over his word to perform it. Mm. That's what he said to the prophet. He says, I'm watching over my word to perform it. You see, he gives you a word. He's watching his word. But if you're not responding, if you're not acting to that word, if you're not coming under the authority of that word, then you're under the authority of a lie. Because you're not stepping into the truth. You see, the enemy wants you to look back at your past. Look and see how it never worked for you. Look and see how you lost your job, or how you lost your house, or how you lost your car, or how you lost, you know, all the places in your life where you failed. Listen, if you're going to look back, you'll become like Lot's wife. There's a young boy in, Sunday, in a Sunday school class that was sharing, and the teacher happened to be sharing about Lot's wife. And this young boy lifted up his hands, and he says, teacher, do you know what? My auntie also looked back and she turned into a lamppost. <laughs> Don't look back. You see, she was driving, she looked back and boom, into the lamppost. So don't look back. Don't look back. God said it. And when God says it, there's an image that comes to your, to your spirit eye. Your spirit man can see it. 
Your spirit man sees it. And when your spirit man sees it, you see it. No one else may see it, but you see it. And you gravitate towards that. Take note, I say, you start gravitating towards it. That means that even gravity won't keep you back. Because you're coming out of it. I mean, when Jesus commanded Peter, he says, come. Peter had to listen. When, when Jesus said, come, Peter had to step out of the boat and walk on that water. came under the authority of that word. And when he came under the authority of that word, that word carried him. So much so, he defied the law of gravity. He walked on the water. And then, because it was something supernatural that happened, it was a supernatural act. Nature could not handle it, therefore a storm arose. Whenever you're about to break into the supernatural, you'll find a storm will arise. But don't look at the storm. Look at the one who calms the storm. If you keep on looking to him, the storm will cease. This is a word that the Lord gave Pastor Sharon when she gave this word to me and I took it as a rebuke. She says, the Lord said, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. My question, that's, a, that, that's her words to me now. My question is, who's the one that tramples on the, serpent, on the serpents and scorpions? Is it the Lord or you? Who's the one that's supposed to trample on the serpents and scorpions. Is it the Lord or you? It's you. It's you. You see, as long as you, as long as you're staying there, you're saying, um, I trust God, but you're not doing anything with your faith. That means that serpent. You know, a serpent has a double head. He's got a double tongue. Mm. Deception, lies. So that means that lie that the enemy brings before you is controlling you and keeping you out of what God has for you on the other side. That scorpion, scorpion does what? It stings. So that sting of the past that sting of your hurt, the pain of the past, keeps you back from where God wants you to go. Because you're mindful now and you're taking thought of the lie. Yet you know the truth. And you say, I believe. But it's not enough just to say, I believe. The Bible says, even the demons themselves believe. Even the demons believe. They believe, but there's one thing they'll never do, is do the word. Yeah. They'll never do it. But you and I, we believe the word. Yeah. We do it of the word. So when you do, you break out. Yeah. You break out of and into. You got that? So don't just be a hearer of the word only. Be a doer of the word. Be a doer of the word. Amen. I mean, you get two different types, two people fellowshipping in the same church, or two friends probably praying together. God comes through for the one, he doesn't come through for the other. Remember Cain and Abel, two brothers from the same house, give an offering to the same God. One God accepts, one God rejects. 
See, very often, people will never tell you what they're not doing. They'll just tell you they're trusting God. They, they'll just tell you, I'm trusting God. But that's as far as it goes. But if you want more, work it. Don't tell me you're free. Show it. Show it. The people that were healed by Jesus, that lame man that had to rise up, he had to show his faith. Listen, it was a faith thing. Blind Bartimaeus, when he screamed out, it was a call of faith. The Lord always responds to faith. Others are telling him, keep quiet. He went louder. You see, that's a radical person. You've got to be radical. Sometimes you'll be ridiculed for your faith. It's true. You'll be ridiculed. You'll be mocked. You'll be scorned. You'll be called every, every name under the sun. But you hold on. You hold on because God is going to come through. If God said it, that settles it. I didn't get this word from a man. I got this word from the creator of the universe. And that same word that he used to create this universe, that word is abiding within me. Therefore, I'm holding on to the same creator word. There's a creator power in the word of God. Come on top of this. When Pastor Sharon said that, and you know, and I received it, I said, wow, Lord, thank you, Lord, that's a creative word. That word, I speak it now, it's creating in me new organs. Come on, somebody. We all face the same challenges. There's no challenge that someone's facing that's bigger than the next person. This is all the same challenges, all the same things. We go through the same motions. Why do you find, especially if a young couple gets married, you find a couple that's been married for years will sit them down and say, hey, let us tell you about this thing. <laughs> They've gone through the motions. They know everything. They can, you know, and sometimes you find some people, they get offended. They say, oh, what can you teach me? But then you find that as they go through, they say, hey, they were right. You go through exactly the same things that they went through. It's the same Storms we face. It's the response that matters. Ever heard the saying, for every action there's a reaction? So even to sit and do nothing, that's an action. I'm doing nothing, nothing will happen. If you've been doing nothing all the time, but you're hoping that something will change, Listen, you can't do the same thing you've been doing 10 years ago. For the past 10 years, you've been doing that, doing nothing, and expect something to happen. It's not going to, you've got to do something. Yes. That's how you find it. You know, when we pray for the sick, and we ask them, and they say, hey, the pain's gone. The first thing you ask is, do what you couldn't do before. Because that's a step of faith. Because very often, when you say, do what you couldn't do before, the person says, uh, the pain is still there. <laughs> you see that? Mm -hmm. Ever heard that, you know, when people have been prayed for for the sick and asked to do what you couldn't do before? Yeah. That's where the real test comes in. If the guy couldn't run before and he had a pain, he's not going to run. Yeah. But if you say, do what you couldn't do before and the guy starts running, then you see, hey, this guy's been here. It's that end. You see, because you came by faith that something will happen, you'll get healed. And the word of healing is re released. But the prayer of faith is released. And then with that, you get a command to do something. So praying didn't do it, didn't do much. Because it's your faith. Yeah. It's your faith. Yes, the guy prayed for you. Yes, he prayed for you so that faith can be released in the atmosphere.
But now there's a responsibility on your behalf because faith has now filled the atmosphere. There's a responsibility on your part to break into that faith. And when you act, it's released. Yeah. But when you stand, nothing happens. Did you get that? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know the word of God. God says, I made you for science and wonders. Wonders. The world must be left in wonder, in awe. How is it possible? You were barely making ends meet yesterday, but now look what the Lord has done. Jesus healed the man and said, Go home and tell everybody what good things the Lord has done for you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You got something this morning. I know that. I know that you've got something this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us stand. Thank you, Jesus. I would just like to quickly welcome our visitor this morning. Welcome. So good to have you join us this morning. Praise God. Pastor Nico's wife, am I correct? Yeah, praise God. Come on, let's just thank God. So sorry, Pastor. I didn't the bar. You know. no, but praise God. We thank God. God is good. It's always good. He's a faithful God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Let us just pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. Thank you for your presence in our lives. Thank you for the authority, Lord God that you have given unto us. That, Father, we can live this life exercising that authority that you gave us. And we trample on serpents and scorpions, O oh Lord God. You've given us authority over all the power of the enemy. Father, we lack nothing. We lack nothing. Our sufficiency is of you. Our dependency is upon you. Thank you that you never fail. Thank you that your word never fails. Thank you for faith that comes by hearing your precious word. I pray, Father, that you will give us the grace to not just be hearers of your word, but to exercise it. As we exercise it, O oh God, that we become practitioners of the Word of God. Thank you for, our, for your presence in our lives on a daily basis. Thank you that you lead us and you guide us by your Spirit and by your Word. Thank you that we can have fellowship with you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, which protects us, which speaks on our behalf. Thank you so much, O Lord. Father, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory, honor, we give you all the worship, we give you our lives, our families, give you everything, Lord. It all belongs to you. Thank you that even as we go from this place, your presence is with us. You will never leave us, nor will you forsake us. Let me just thank you this morning. Thank you that you are God, not just that 
you are a loving Father who loves us. A good shepherd who cares for us and tends to us. So we thank you this morning in Jesus' blessed name. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of you, both now and forevermore, in Jesus' mighty name. Surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life as you continually dwell in the house of the Lord God Most High, both now and forevermore, in Jesus' blessed name, and the people of God say, Amen, Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much to all of you for coming. It's a step of faith. You just did faith, man. You just did the word by coming.